Hey everyone, I'm Porter Brooks and this is my channel, Porter Brooks Cooks. Today, um, I'm working on a few different things for you, but what we're gonna do is a Salisbury steak. The base on this, you're gonna have to go look up. Look for another video of mine where I made my homemade ground round. It is really, really, really good and it really makes a huge difference. I'm going to start by actually pulling some uh, peppers and onions, which I've been uh, sauteing on the stove and bring them to you. Okay, you can see how these are just lightly done. All right, so I've got a, looks like about two pounds of fresh ground round. Again, look for that vid because this will blow your mind. Yeah, um, and uh, to that, so let's see, if we do two, there'll be about a quarter pound, a little bit less, I think, per person. I'm gonna go ahead and add my um, sauteed onions and peppers. It's just a green bell pepper. In fact, I should probably show you something here. Here are some peppers, which I have prepped for you. That'll be good. Uh, you don't need a lot. A little bit of flavor goes a long way here. So with my softened, I'm also going to put my raw green bell peppers in. And I'm going to use my coarse sea salt. I usually have two different grinds, but this can take a lot. And guys, don't freak out, right? There's a lot of meat here. So we're going to put uh, quite, a, quite a bit of salt in that. I don't really do the bread crummy thing in this. I just don't think it's necessary and I don't think it's that traditional, but there is a lot that goes in. And for all my British friends out there, we know the truth. Salisbury steak, wait for it guys. It's not British, not from Salisbury, England. It was actually made in the US, I think maybe to feed workers or miners. Somebody look that up and send me the comment on it. Okay, so first of all, you always need some Worcestershire. Let me pull that in for you. Again, there's a couple pounds of meat here, right? So we definitely need to get some flavor in there. It's probably about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. Now, this is just me. I like this, a dark balsamic vinegar. Not a lot, but I like the acid in there. And we may retest it. Of course, we want ground black pepper a lot. If you've watched me in the past, you know I'm always saying five grinds. Well, in this case, it's gonna be 10. It looks like it's coming out pretty light. Um, that's okay, all right, just keep it going. It's Salisbury steak. We want some flavor in there. We don't want it mushy. Garlic powder, I don't like garlic salt. Never use garlic salt just because of the salt issue. So just a little bit in there. May or may not be traditional. I like a little heat, so I'm gonna just use a straight pepper hot sauce. That'll just give it a little extra body. I like a little uh, ground coriander. So I will put, I don't know, a little less than a teaspoon maybe, probably about 10 shakes of that in there. And then the other thing I really love are fennel seeds. So you can get a fennel, which is the uh, anisette flavor, or dill. Dill seeds will work good just as well. And I just put it in a old grinder that I've finished the peppers in, and I grind a couple, uh, couple grinds of that. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up. I'm gonna use my immaculately clean hands, as Julia Child used to say. Really, to me, it's the only way to get it going. I wanna start with this, and then I'm going to add an absolutely necessary ingredient. All right, that's good enough for now. And what that is, by the way, if you don't have one of these automatic sink faucets, get one because they really are super. Okay, so a good British mustard is always good, although I'm not sure why, because it's not British. So I'm using a very, very hot, spicy uh, mustard right here. It comes in a can, looks like this, and I like some heat on this. This is gonna go a long way. So one of the options is to go ahead and turn this into a paste with just water. The other one, I, I like a lot, guys. The other one is just, is just put it in dry. All right, so we're gonna mix again. I'm just feeling, I know you'll learn as you go, but I'm feeling like I want a little bit more pepper in that. Hey, your house, your rules, right? 
but nothing makes me crazier than something come out coming out under seasoned. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit for a quick second while I get to work on my sauce. As you know, you've got to have a brown gravy-ish type thing. There's a thousand ways to do it. I'm doing speed scratch. What that means, if you're just meeting me for the first time, it's help from the store. So I'm going to do just about a half a can of sodium-free uh, beef broth to start. And I'm going to use a quality, this is actually an instant au jus mix. And I can guarantee you most restaurants use this. And I'm going to... Uh, probably do about, let's see, I'm going to go straight in. It's a lot, guys. There's a, there's a really salty flavor here. I'm going to say two tablespoons right off the bat. So two tablespoons to about four ounces. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to get that going. And I like to start it a little thick. Now remember, the flavor here, it is intense. And that's what we want because our sauce is going to be mushrooms and our brown gravy, and that's gonna happen over there. So we're gonna start by just, again, letting that sit on the side, and I'm gonna form my patties. For that, I'm gonna put them right back into my pan, so let me go get that, and we are just going to get this heated and we're gonna brown on the stove. So patties, hands, there's a really good trick to not make this stick, and that is just get your hands slightly wet with water. I don't like the oil trick. And you can work pretty quick. You can see how shiny that is. So I start with just an estimate and then I go back and fill it. We're going, that's big. We're going for four patties, two per person. And these freeze beautifully, by the way. They really, really freeze great. So there we have it. Now I am going to while these sit here and just rest for a second, I'm gonna go pop that pan on over there. I like to add a little bit of oil to the pan just to get these going. And this is a half-half canola and an avocado oil, which really has a high smoke point. So that kind of helps things out. It's gonna be tight to get these in here, but I want them tight. And I'll show you how we're going to get that hot and brown that up. Also, do you like a little bit of butter just to help that? And we'll reserve some of that on the side. We're going to just use canned mushrooms when we create our sauce. All right, we're going in. Barely going to get these in here, but I'm determined to do it. It's gonna be a little tight, guys, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so we have our Salisbury steak patties in. We're just gonna leave them, bring our temperature up a little bit. Don't go too far. We do want this to be nice and crispy, but we don't want it to be black on the other side. So this is gonna go for just a couple minutes and I will be right back to you. Well, I told you I wanted the base to our sauce uh, to kind of start, and this is really ready. It's been sitting here cool, so I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna put this on the stove as well. All right, so let's give some fire here. Make sure you can see that. There you go. All right, we're gonna bring that up pretty fast. Hot pad on the side, and just go as tight as you can, okay? There we go, ah ha ha, yes. I know they all use words like fawn and caramelization, but okay, that is, the one in the middle is perfect. That's because I've got an oval pan on a um, high temp center burner. So, you know, work it out. If you had a round one, you'd be fine. I'm not gonna, boy, I wish I could get that. See, now that's where it's gonna fall apart. We'll be fine in the gravy, but just pay attention there. All right, we're gonna bring this up to a boil. That's fast as possible. It doesn't have to come the whole way. Um, I have some green onion, but I think what we'll do, since I always like repeating flavors, I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit more of our green bell pepper. And I want it in just thin slices. And then we'll make kind of this sexy little, sexy little crisscross on there. All right, okay, let's see how these are doing. All right, 
The sauce is ready. You can see that it's heated up. And I'm not gonna touch these, but all of that, that's the flavor. And I'm gonna go a little at a time. So here comes some of our canned mushrooms. You can do it with fresh, but you're gonna be here all night long. So just checking here for you. Four ounces, all right? Those are in. Heat's about halfway. Try to get them as close as you can. And always make sure you've got that. Okay, here we go, guys. Here's some of our broth base. Now, I'm going to put half of it in like this. Let it simmer. And then, in here I have flour, but it's got a sifter top, so I don't have to do all that roux and everything else. So we're going we're gonna to do this. All right, so in... Whoa! Close, guys. In my leftover... Look at that. Oh, Salisbury. So you want to whisk while you're shaking it in. See, I've already got some lumps there because I didn't move that fast. But it really, it really makes it easy. So, all right. Do you see how that's thickening up? If we had this cold, we would have to wait for this to come all the way up. And I'm going to get this extra thick on the way in. All right, so one of the ways that we test the thickness of a sauce, so let me show you this. Doesn't stick to the bottom of it, right? Let me show you this. Do you see how it sticks to the bottom of the spoon? Needs a little bit more tension. By that I mean heat, a little more flour, and a little more whisking. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna pop in here. I'm going to actually just do it on here for you guys today, right? It's just you and me. We want to sauce it. I guarantee you almost every single recipe is going to say make the whole thing in a pan. But I like the two consistencies. So I want some mushrooms right on the top, right? It is always important to me to repeat flavors and remind ingredients whenever you can do that. So in this case, we have peppers, mushrooms, and I'm gonna put that so they're just more prominent. Okay, now let's uh, repeat these colors. So if we wanna get fancy, we can do little crisscrosses like that. And if we wanna, you know, maybe just be a little bit more casual, actually let's do them all the way across because I'm ready for that, right? So we're just gonna do our X's, X's and O's, Okay, there we have it. Salisbury, oh my gosh. I can't, you know what, I gotta taste this. I'm sorry, guys. Um, let me get into this here. Okay, let's see, which one, which one, which one? I'll give you right in the middle of the camera. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> see, our peppers are inside, we have our mushrooms, and I like the crispy edge, so let me get that. Hot, hot, hot. All right. Here comes my homemade Salisbury steak bite. Don't call me if you burn your mouth. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, you really taste that dry mustard and you taste the balsamic, what normally you wouldn't put in there. Oh my gosh, I like it so much. Now just a mushroom. Mm. Beautiful, you guys. Gravy came out perfect. This was my homemade Salisbury steak. It really helps me if you follow me at the Porter Brooks, IG, everywhere, Twitter, just, you know, find me, I'll repost all these things. The comments really help. Tell me if you braved homemade Salisbury steak and tell me if you thought it was British. Um, so like, subscribe, share, it really helps, but the comments mean the most to me because that's where you and I get to hang out together. I'm Porter Brooks, see you later.